guys, today I want to talk about FM synthesis using reactor blocks and I thought it might be a good idea to first explain the very basics of how FM synthesis works and to do so I created this very simple patch. If we switch to the other view we can see that I have two oscillators, I have a note in module, I have an ADSR which is just an envelope and that goes to our VCA and then it goes to a simple leveling block. So I renamed these, the first one is module and the second one is carrier and you can see that the output of the modulator goes to mod A of the carrier. So right now if we switch back here um, this is the oscillator that we're actually hearing the, ca the carrier and then the modulator is the one that's being sent to the A input of this carrier. Alright so without anything um, if I play it right now we get a super low sound and that's because I'm not routing any pitch data from my sequencer. I'm only routing the gate so that I can stop the sound. Um, you can see I have a MIDI region here with one note but it doesn't matter which note that is. It's always the same low sound. So um, if we want to hear this oscillator we need to set the pitch a little bit higher. Now let's see what happens if I set the amount of modulation for the frequency here. So um, remember this modulator here, the output of that is being sent to the input A of the carrier and that's why we see that activity there. And now if I play this, we hear some crazy sort of pitch shifting sounds. If I lower this a little bit, So there we can hear the pitch of this modulator influencing the pitch of the carrier. So if I set this lower, so this would be the exact same thing as having an LFO, remember low frequency oscillator, controlling the pitch of something else. The only thing with FM is it's, it's very fast. So basically this speed here, if we start increasing it, you'll hear that we don't, we don't hear the individual pitch changes anymore but after a certain point it becomes one sort of sound. And that is what FM is. So Reactor is great to experiment with that because we can use all sorts of oscillators and just send them to some of these inputs and then use it as FM. For example, I'm now doing classic sort of pitch modulation, but I could just as well use that to modulate the waveform as well. And then again, if I start very low, we can hear what that does. Then if I start increasing that, we can get some very cool tones. So you can use FM on anything basically. Now let's uh, make this into a little bit more of a useful sort of patch. And to do that, I'm going to first route the pitch of my note in module to the pitch of the modulator and to the pitch of the carrier so that we can get harmonic ratios because that's the thing with FM after a certain point we start hearing that timbre we don't hear the individual cycles anymore but we hear the effect of the modulation and it's so fast that we cannot hear the actual changes as soon as you approach audio rate it becomes more important whether you're in tune because harmonic ratios in other in other words ratios that are multiples of the of the carrier pitch will sound a lot better generally or I guess it doesn't necessarily sound better but it will sound in tune. If you're going for drum-like or atonal sounds then you can get away with a lot stranger um, modulator ratios. Um, but now these are both listening to my keyboard and I have this uh, keyboard I can switch on here means meaning that it's gonna follow the pitch. So let's actually get a melody in there right now and I'll set this a lot lower. Let's set it to zero. And I'll set my sustain down on my envelope to just get a plucky kind of sound. So right now we're not doing any FM, but we can do so by increasing this A amount right here. Yeah, 
you can hear we get some very unique tones. Now, I should know that right now I'm using these uh, generic modulation inputs, but there's also a dedicated FM input which we can use. So um, if I take my modulator and instead of sending the output to mod A, I send it to my FM input, that means that this knob is now going to work and this is now going to set the FM amount. So this is also going to uh, modulate the pitch. And from this point, you can start experimenting. For example, setting your carrier to a sine wave and then your modulator to a saw wave. And setting your modulator very low and your carrier very high. Or the other way around, setting your carrier very low, like minus 48 semitones, and setting your modulator very high. So a lot of cool tones there. Now let's check out one other thing, what we haven't done yet. So, so far we've been modulating the frequency and, and we briefly modulated the waveform, but um, you might've heard about filter FM, which is basically exactly the same thing, um, except that we're using that fast audio signal to modulate a filter cutoff. So let's go to our library and I happen to like this Monarch filter right here. So I'm gonna just load that and I'm going to put that in between my output right there and my VCA. So now the whole signal passes through this filter and then I'm going to route the um, output of our modulator to the FM input of this filter and while I'm at it I might also route the pitch of my note into the pitch of the filter so that we can do some key tracking. All right so now I'm just going to drag this in order like that I usually have my I try to reflect the, the signal flow in, in this main window here as well so now um, this filter here has this FM knob which is the same deal as this one right here it's just the FM amount so for now I'm gonna uh, dial this one down so that we're not doing actual frequency modulation so we're just hearing this oscillator and the modulator is not doing anything at the moment and then I'm going to set the FM amount on my filter here. So now this is starting to modulate the filter cutoff and we can hear that a lot better if we give it a little bit of resonance and we start lowering the cutoff. And again here, you'll, you'll hear that if I set this modulator to be very low, um, let's say below 20 hertz then it starts to act like an LFO again so we can set it to a saw wave and you should hear that sort of plucky kind of sound And then if we go very fast, um, let's set it to 12, we get more typical FM sounds. And let's try this with a bandpass filter instead. And what you could do at this point, like you can take this really far, which is like the reactor thing, of course. Like one thing that you could do at this point is to um, put an envelope on my filter as well and send that to the mod A. And then I can use FM 
cutoff modulation in combination with envelope cutoff modulation. So that's going to be, let's now also rename these. So this is my um, main, or let's just call it envelope one and then envelope two, which is a modulation envelope. And that way we can see which one is doing what. So um, envelope two is controlling the filter cutoff. And then we can use a little bit of feedback here, which is going to send the output of the filter back to the input. And since this is an analog modeled filter, that will start to sound very interesting. All right, and now let's use this in combination with some actual FM um, by setting this knob right here. And let's just finish that with a little bit of uh, reverb, which we can find in this rounds category. And then I'll double click to load that. And I'm going to put that in between my VCA and my actual level slider. Just to make it a little bit prettier. And we'll set the size of that a little bit bigger, diffusion a little bit more. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Of course, we can take this much further. You can put envelopes in between your FM amount to control the precise um, FM amount over time. Um, there's there's just so much you can do. You can let this modulator, the one that's sort of frequency modulating the carrier, you can also frequency modulate the modulator with some other oscillator because that one, of course, also has this FM input right here. So you can go completely crazy with this, but hopefully this gives you some ideas and a good place to start with. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. If you're an aspiring music producer looking for that breakthrough moment to evolve your sound, check out our online mentorship network at pyramind.com.